Submatic 10X. And is it worthy of a spot in your portfolio? I don't know. I've never researched it before, but that's what we're going to do next. You're going to see Brian Stoffel and I look at PubMax, uh, Pubmatic's uh, SEC filings, look at investor presentations, dig into the company's investor relations page, all in an effort to fill out our checklist to figure out if we think this company is worth buying or not. Joining me today, as always, is Mr. Stoffel. Brian, you know a little bit about Pubmatic. I do. I know a little bit about it. I did a little bit of work on this for The Motley Fool, and afterwards I decided I liked it enough to take a very small, less than 1% position. I don't do that often, um, but this was one of them. But honestly, it, that was a while ago. It was last year. Um, and I'm excited to get back into it because this this area of advertising is one I'm usually not very exciting about, uh, excited about. So there's something that must have made me excited about this. Yeah, I've never researched before. So that'll be interesting to see uh, what this company does and how it scores on our uh, framework. So with that, you ready? Let's get started. Thank you to StockCard.io for sponsoring uh, this video. We'll be using them, as always, to keep ourselves accountable. Uh, we'll also review some of our results, uh, which, spoiler alert, haven't been good. Hey, let me tell you <laughs> something. It will be a humbling experience. Everyone should feel good about themselves after comparing themselves to us. For sure. So why are we doing Pubmatic? Uh, we put out a vote to just our YouTube channel members uh, last uh, this week, and Pubmatic uh, won by a long shot. So thank you to all the channel members that voted. All right, we're going to start out at StockCard.io. The ticker symbol for here is P-U-B-M for Pubmatic. Okay. So Pubmatic. Uh, it's down today. And let's see, all time. So it's down uh since since becoming a public company so it did so in december of 2020 and eh, it's a growth stock so uh it looks like it was very excitable in february and then everyone hates it now and if so, you look i know that those are like interweek highs it got as high as 78 dollars over on the right there so i mean it's fallen what dramatically what is that, like 75 percent dramatically Oh, it and happens. you were signed out again. You got to go back in. I don't know why that this happens. Happen. Yeah. That ha Listen, the security round stock card is heavy. <laughs> they need to make sure that nobody's trying to get into our Beat the Brian's contest. There you go. And win $1,000. P-U-B-M. That should work. There okay. we go. There we go. Pubmatic is engaged in the digital advertising business. So is this company... I, Kind of like the trade desk. So yes. And I, but the thing is, is I think they're on the other side of it. Like I know that both of them play on the supply and the demand side, mm -hmm. but Pubmatic is more on the supply side. Okay. The company I, provides a specialized cloud infrastructure platform that enables real time programmatic advertising transactions. So real time. So it's a software company. Mm-hmm. Uh, that enables programmatic advertising transaction. Can you explain what that means? That means that, so it's like when you're watching one of our videos, uh, the ad that pops up at the beginning of one of our videos is going to be different for you than it is for me because I have a different search history that Google has collected and they programmatic advertising means unlike in linear TV where everyone sees the same commercial when they're watching an episode of something, it is tailored to you and it can happen almost instantaneously. So that's what programmatic advertising is. And that's one of the big reasons why the Trade Desk has gone so well. So the Trade Desk is more of like, almost like the Roku. It's like a Switzerland. It doesn't care what medium you go on. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see if this company is uh, similar to that. The platform helps independent app developers and publishers to control and maximize their digital advertising business. So kind of like Digital Turbine? Um, my sense is that it's not quite like that. I know that's where digital turbines getting into. I mean, what they're really focused on from my understanding is helping small businesses that create content on the internet monetize their work. So if you and I had a new website that we said, if you want to watch us, you need to go to this website in order to watch our live broadcast, because we're not going to be on YouTube for some reason, it would behoove us to look at Pubmatic. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, well, according to this, I see a market cap of about a billion, mm -hmm. uh, huge range and high to low, uh, free cash flow positive. positive. 
positive mm -hmm. earnings per share positive uh pe ratio of 26. i mean that's I pretty reasonable i wonder if that's real though right so yeah. like earnings that but there's still a whole bunch of things could make earnings go crazy but price, price to, to sales, sales six. of of six what is price to sales for you know what i'm going to look up right now what the price to sales for trade desk is i'm going to guess it's, 25. well i haven't because it's so similar price. yeah okay um but you know to give you an idea their price to sales is 41. Okay. Huh. I was off by quite a bit. All right. So most recent, uh, last fiscal year grew 30%. Okay. Most recent quarter, 53%. Mm -hmm. So obviously it makes perfect sense why this mm -hmm. stock is down 75% from its high current fiscal year revenue growth estimate, 91%. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, you uh, gotta, you also have to consider that a lot of those advertising budgets, especially for the small players, which is what PubMedic focuses on, like evaporated for a while in 2020. Okay. Last fiscal year, positive earnings last 12 months, positive 96 cents gross margin of 72%, uh, percent, uh, a good short ratio. Uh, excuse me, short ratio, the good current ratio of just short term <laughs> assets, 26 million in positive free cash flow, returns on invested capital of 26%, returns on asset of 13%, return on equity of 26%. Pfft. So mm -hmm. far, so good there. Uh, the short term movements of the stock have not been good. It doesn't pay a dividend. I would hope not if it's growing that fast. Buying back stock um does that okay say that there's a share buyback uh it says worth of shares issued is so negative okay got it yeah it's issuing shares not not surprising before you okay. go on welcome to corey barnes who just became a member of our channel thank hey. you for being here corey uh dave drum mr dave drum uh says pubmatic is a trade desk inventory yeah. partner uh there are other sides of the thank mm -hmm. you Thank you, Dave, as always. Okay, so we'll check out, is that the investor relations? Yeah, I just want to go to pubmatic.com too. Anyway, Pugmatic fuels the endless potential of internet content creators. See, that's us. That's us. Our company, our company provides a specialized cloud infrastructure platform that enables real-time programmatic advertising. Can you see that okay? That's better. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, we believe that our purpose-built technology and infrastructure provides superior outcomes for both the internet content creators, publishers, and the advertisers, buyers. By harnessing our massive data asset and leveraging our sophisticated machine learning algorithms, AI claim, mm -hmm. uh, we increase publisher revenue, advertiser return on investment, and marketplace liquidity while improving the cost efficiency of our technology platform and our publishers and buyers business. That's a run on sentence, but okay. Mm -hmm. uh, fiscal year. Okay. Uh, so they're reporting earnings on the 28th. So the and most I recent, do, I do believe that up there was the mission statement to fuel the endless potential of internet content creators. Okay. News roundup of oh, investor presentation. Maybe, maybe I felt all warm and fuzzy because I felt like they were looking out for us. Uh, did I push down? Okay. If I push this, is it going to screw it up? Can you see? Yep. That screw it up. No, no, no. That was good. What you just did. There you go. Okay. Uh, Rajiv goal, Go goal? co-founder and CEO and a director, uh, IAB. Is that a, a company he used to be a part of probably? Not sure. Steve. Pant Pantelic is the CFO. Uh, Amar Goal, I'm assuming the brother, founder, chief innovation officer, and chairman. Okay. So, so we he's have on the board brothers. and in the C suite. Yeah. And the chairman. Yeah. And the CIO. Yep. Another, uh, uh, Mukul Kumar, uh, co founder and president. So three co founders all mm -hmm. making the decisions and in engineering. Uh, John Sabella, IAB. I wonder if that was an acquisition. Uh, I don't know. Okay. Mission. Hey, there you go. Fuels the endless potential of internet content creator. Uh, mission to fuel the endless potential of internet content creators. Okay. All right. It's simple. I like it. It's optionable. 
Yeah, I could see that being um to me that's inspirational. I mean, I think it's so cool that I can hop on the internet and learn something that would have taken me like I would have had to go to college for, you know. Uh but I can do it now because it, there's a way that people can afford to give up their time to teach people stuff. Sure. Oops. What did I do? Okay, trying to get that bigger. Okay. Our core beliefs. All advertising will become digital. Uh, I almost completely agree. I think 90% of advertising yeah. will become I digital. I think billboards are just going to stay right like they are. Yes. Um, although, according to the trade desk, the advertising, like the, the way you pay for which billboards, that will eventually go digital, which makes sense. The Maybe. way you pay for them? Yes, yeah. I believe so that. The, the, the advertising will still be a billboard. But, but it won't be just... programmatic. Right. And will become programmatic. So I don't believe that 100%. I believe that a whole bunch of it will, but not 100%. Uh, okay. Ad-supported open internet will thrive. Ad-supported open internet. So the internet wants to be free, and the way that's going to be supported is with ads. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Omni-channel. Okay, yeah, you can have my cookie. Omni-channel platforms will win versus point solutions. So, so in other words, connected TV, um, mobile devices, um, desktop. Just it'll be better if you can get hit all of those buttons. In, with in one, one company, one, with right. one platform versus using. Long-term success requires a differentiated infrastructure. Long-term success requires a differentiated infrastructure. Okay. Our role. Okay. Thank you. Things like this are very helpful. Publishers and app developers. Okay. Sell side platform, specialized cloud infrastructure, Pubmatic. So they're just on the sell side platform. Demand side platforms. That's the trade desk. Mm -hmm. Or the, the, the buy side. Connecting with advertisers and agencies. And we know that most advertisers and agencies these days use the demand side side platforms they're not they're almost never going to go right to pubmatic uh key benefits of our cloud infrastructure for digital advertising the publishers get data demand header bidding expertise and independence okay uh advertising agencies get quality inventory transparency global omnichain sales and value so it's better more revenue for publishers better return on investment for Advertisers, Pub, mm -hmm. Pubmatic makes that happen. Okay. Specialized infrastructure to power digital advertising. Uh, is that their headquarters? Oh, cloud cloud services. This is where their clouds are located. Mm -hmm. 2.59 billion ad impressions per day. 1.1 trillion advertising bids per day. And a whole bunch of information processed per day. Okay. Significant tailwinds drive growth in digital advertising. Yeah, you don't need to convince us of this. Yep. Yeah. The right. Uh, agreed. The market is big and growing. Uh, the trade desk CEO says it's a tr advertising is going to be a trillion dollar market within five years. Key dynamics of market opportunity: elevated digital ad spend, rise of OTT slash CTV. I know OTT oh, is over, over the top. The top. Roku. And, there you go. And CTV. CTV Connected, connected TV. TV. Right. So uh, Disney Plus, YouTube. It's not linear. Explosion of programmatic header bidding. I don't, don't know what that means. Yeah, I don't understand that either. Uh, buyer ad spend consolidating into fewer sell-side platforms. So this consolidation in the industry makes sense. Is Trade this a desk. network effect? Is this a network effect business? Um, this of sorts? Yeah. I think it could be protecting consumer privacy and shift away from cookies. Yup. Even though you just asked me for one, <laughs> yeah. four consecutive quarters of exceptional results, 50% organic revenue growth, 30% adjusted EBITDA margin. Woof. Yeah. Those are, those are the trade desk like numbers. Mm -hmm. Okay. Header bidding increases impression volumes and costs prior to header bidding. Published ad inventory, SSP, DSP one. Okay, after header bidding, so it goes to numerous SSPs, and that goes to so header bidding gives people far more reach. That's what it looks like, or more, or there's more, more competition. Yeah, more, I would say more control. 
yeah, so you can you can make more specifications mm -hmm. with what you want to see, and that can be more specific. Okay, it's it's good. Okay, our competitive differentiators, specialized cloud infrastructure for digital advertising. Very hard to know about that. Yeah, transparent business model based on usage. Okay, it's a business model based on usage, which is. I mean, the thing about usage-based model is that it's definitely more volatile, definitely more volatile than one that's based on flat subscription fees. Mm -hmm. But since it's got those tailwinds, if you're willing to ride that volatility, the ups are going to be really high up. Leader in buyer ad spend consolidation. So they're the leader in buyer ad spend consolidation. So they're not the market share leader. They're the ad spend consolidation leader. Um, who does this company compete against? What was the name of that company that like very Wait. similar to this and they like uh, changed the name like twice? Magnite? Yes. Mm -hmm. Magnite. So that's a competitor. I believe so. Growing market share via the PubMedic flywheel. High margin revenue, E. Innovation and expanding customer usage. Okay. Buyers concentrate higher share of budgets on our platform. Publishers monetize more inventory at higher CPM. So those are the two draws that keep people coming to PubMatic. Expanding usage with buyers via supply path optimization. Advertisers, they have these as advertisers. Supply path optimization deals are driving more spend. Agencies, okay, so they work with agencies. Mm -hmm. That's good. Uh, those are the big ones. IP, uh, IPG, WPP, uh, yeah. and, and demand side platforms, the trade desk. Verizon. Okay. Workflow automation, data and audience inventory, transparency. Okay. Leading publishers choose Pubmatic. Uh, Zynga, Yahoo, WebMD. Quora, Microsoft, Washington Post, App Lovin, Unity's in Division, A, B, C. Okay. Omni Channel and Rapid Innovation. Okay. So big names behind them. Yeah. Unity's in there. Well, if you're so they help get you ads in front of games, right? So if you yeah. design a game on Unity and you have a freemium model, then you you can use land and expand strategy, superior performance, inventory expansion, and product expansion. Open wrap, identity hub, audience encore, PMPs. Don't know what that means. Do you know, I, what, I, do you know what I call this slide though? Optionality. This is the optionality slide. Okay. Growing our opportunity in innovation in audience addressability, known identity, identity hub. So helps you figure out who they are, right. the audience is, without cookies, I would assume. Sandbox solutions, contextual signals, and first party data. Okay. First party data is kind of important. That means that they've got some data that they're not drawing from public sources. It is right. their so data. Can give them a, that could give them an edge if that if that data proves to be valuable. Right. Um, multiple growth drivers, increasing utilization, uh, publishers, agencies, advertisers. So, right. The more formats we have on, the better it is. Financials. Uh, I like all those words. <laughs> uh, revenue up, up, up faster, up and up uh, faster. That's sequential. Uh, no, 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 no. Okay. Year year. That, you're right. You're right. But still up and up faster. Okay. 54, 170% net income growth adjusted, adjusted EBITDA growth. Great. Strong advertising spend. Advertisers placing ads in our platform. 60,000 advertisers. You ever growth, the number of advertisers spending more than $1,000 is 40%. That's not a lot of money, but okay. You ever well, but you gotta, spend? you gotta remember they put those big names up there, but you know, if you and I start our own website, you know, that might be our budget. $1,000. Strong revenue growth across channels, 64% CT, uh, Yarvia desktop revenue growth. Very strong. Okay. Net dollar retention rate. Whoosh. At that. 157%. Now. That is things... snowflake like. Snowflake like. Yes. So this is what we were talking about with, if you have a usage based model, yeah, it can, but I think the key here is not so much that 157%. I think the key here is that 110%. Now, I realize that advertising budgets were coming back by the start of the third quarter. But if you think about it, that's July 2020. Like, 
They were just July, barely coming back. August, September. Yeah. Yeah. So they were just barely coming back and they still grew their net dollar retention rate. To, to me, that's even more impressive. Robust gross profits. So 72% gross margin. So their gross profit is 42 million. So for the full year, what's that? 55 million ish in gross profit. High marginal profitability from structured leverage, 25% reduction in cost of revenue per million impressions processed. How'd you do that? Increased infrastructure utilization. I mean, that's just scale. Yeah. Uh, okay. That's all it is. It's scale. Uh, yeah. So this is, we should make a video about operating leverage and economies of scale, Brian. Interesting. We should, <laughs> oh, wait a minute. It's too bad we can't link to them when we do live ones. Yeah. Uh, these are a really critical point. Uh, so the, so their costs are going up, but they're still getting operating leverage uh, because their revenue is growing so much faster. I wonder if this includes stock-based compensation, particularly in sales, customer support, and engineering, increased public company expenses, and stock-based compensation. Yes, but they're still uh, achieving efficiencies there. Uh, cool. Net income, $13 million, an adjusted EBITDA, a metric I don't like, but very strong, mm -hmm. very strong number. Wow. Delivering cash flow. Okay. Uh, drivers, workflow automation, continuous optimization, offshore or ID leverage. Okay. So in other words, they're hiring people outside of the United States to do lots of work. Yep. Uh, significant growth and opportunity for market share gains, differentiated, accelerated, consistent profitability with strong free cash flow. All right. And how much? So this is 2021 net income was 13 million stock-based comp only three, only 4 million, uh, three month ending. Okay. Uh, still so annualized at million. 16. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 16. Yeah. You're right. Um, okay. Revenue was 58. So very strong margins so far. In fact, one of the knocks against this company is not a lot of operating leverage <laughs> left. Um, still, uh, that's, that's a good start, uh, for sure. So let's go to financial information, annual report. Do we have that? Yeah. 2020. So you don't have 2021 now. We don't have 2021, but we'll go to the most recent quarterly report uh, for it. So here's PubMatix 10K, which is their annual report. I mean, for this, I think the important thing is just going to be to read the business. So the, the data itself might not even be because it's just changed so much. Yeah. Okay. Our mission. Pubmatic fuels the endless potential of internet content creators. Well, consistency. Good yep. job there. I two. wish it was too fuel, but still, you get it. Our company provides a specialized cloud infrastructure platform that enables real-time programmatic advertising transactions. We believe our purpose-built technology infrastructure provides superior customer outcomes for both internet content creators and buyers. Our platform processes 46.9 trillion ad impressions, up 69% each in a fraction of a second. A second. We were founded in 2006 with the vision that data-driven decisions would be the future of advertising. And since then, we have been invested significantly in developing our platform by harnessing our massive data asset and leveraging our sophisticated machine learning. We increase publisher revenue, advertiser return on investment, and marketplace liquidity. Now, one thing I'm just going to interject here is that this is one where I would actually buy that there are some network effects for AI. And the main reason I would do that was because of that it, it's borne out in the numbers mm -hmm. that the scale is is it's there, and they're and they're working off of a fairly small base too. Yeah, to me, it's always okay. This is the story, and the the numbers yep. prove that the story is real. Yep. Right. So yep. you can say whatever you want, and then it's like, all right, back it up with actual numbers. Yep. So far, so good there. Yep. Uh, our cloud infrastructure platform provides superior monetization for publishers by increasing the value of our ad impressions and providing incremental demand through deep and growing relations with our buyers. Our platform is omni-channel, supporting a wide variety of ad for 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 formats and digital devices. We are aligned with our publishers and app developer partners by being independent. Important. That's like the Roku. Uh, being independent uh, does matter. Uh, you want to explain that versus Facebook and Google? Yeah. So the thing about Facebook and Google is, is that they are going to favor their own properties because it's Facebook or Google. And well, they're so by, walled gardens, right? They right. keep you in there. You can't advertise outside them. So you can, but you can advertise wherever you want if you use Pubmatic. 
So during the fiscal year, we added 360 new publishing partners. As of, we served approximately 1,200 publishers and app developers. I'm guessing that that is 1,500 now, including many regional leading digital companies such as Verizon Media Group and News Corp. We also demonstrated we can retain and grow revenues from our publisher customers. Our dollar-based net revenue retention was 122%, up from 109% in 2019. So that's a strong number for 2020 because advertising demand sank yeah, That's what I'm saying. In Q1 that's what I'm and saying. Q2. The fact yep. that they had 110 in the third quarter was impressive. Building on our early success as a sell-side platform, we have extended our platform to also meet the needs of buyers. We are integrated with the leading demand-side platforms, such as the Trade Desks and Google DV360. That's a terrible name, Google. <laughs> uh, allowing them to execute real-time transactions with our publisher clients. More recently, agencies and advertisers have started consolidating their spend with fewer, larger technology platforms to improve transparency, quality, and control over their advertising dollars. We have entered into agreements with all of the major agency holding companies and some of the largest advertisers in the world and believe this will continue to drive more ad spend to our platform. Cool. We believe we are positioned to benefit from several trends. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, rapid innovation. Yep. Lots of trends. All you, right. So you, this, have, you, you have tailwinds. We get but it. This next paragraph is important. We own and operate our own software and, and hardware, hardware infrastructure around the world which saves us significant costs as compared to companies that rely on public cloud alternatives, partly due to the data intensive nature of digital advertising. So they don't use AWS, they built their own. And so what I'm gonna say about that too is, is in the comments section, we've already had a number of people talk about how Magnite is the key, is the key uh, competition and they don't own the hardware. Okay. And so that that's a huge, that's a counter positioning right there. Uh, well, uh, yes, uh, but that, that, that also should bear out in the gross margins. So as more scale comes, in theory, this company's gross margin should continually expand. Right. And it, it might have a harder time if you're paying somebody else, although then you get leverage. Like, for example, Pinterest, Pinterest doesn't, know, doesn't have its own service. It uses, I'm pretty sure, AWS. And when that happened, I was like, well, gross margin ain't going higher, but it right. has. So there's also that to think about. Um, but anyway, it's, it's a, it's a, strategy I mean, the way, the, the way that I think about it is, is it's, you're choosing the long-term hard over the short-term easy. If you want it to be easy over the short-term, you get someone else to do your work for you. And that's great because then you can get off the ground really quick. But if you really want to build something, then you roll up your sleeves and you build these server centers yourselves and input them and make mistakes, knowing that 10 years down the road, you'll be really glad you did. Sure. Agreed. Okay, uh, so digital advertising spend was all the billions, and it's going to grow to all the more billions. Uh, digital ad spend is growing more than 10%. Okay, our industry, digital advertising is the primary business model of the internet. Yep. Uh, advertising funds so much. Agreed. Digital advertising ecosystem has become increasingly complex. While programmatic header bidding, a core digital advertising technology, has enabled the purchasing and selling of vast amounts of digital advertising inventory, there is now exist significant challenges related to the proliferation of media across platforms, transaction speed, increased cost transaction, and regulatory requirements. Uh, specialized software and hardware industry are needed to optimally power these technology-driven transactions. Okay. Um, so rapid provision of duty asset. Yep, so demand for this stuff is growing. You don't have to convince me of any of this. The mm -hmm. rise of programmatic header bidding. Direct sales via manual person-to-person -person processes are inadequate and create a real tizing are inadequate to creating a real-time advertising marketplace for buyers and sellers. The challenge of scale and complexity of the digital advertising ecosystem requires an automated and efficient process to purchasing ads online known as programmatic advertising. Programmatic yeah. advertising on an automated basis enables buyers, advertisers, and their agencies to purchase ad impressions. Yep, yeah, yeah, yeah. Within milliseconds, header bidding, yeah, explain this to me, which came to prominence in 2016, further increased the complexity of programmatic advertising. Header bidding involves putting software code on a publisher's website or app, allowing it to host a single parallel auction with multiple intersected parties simultaneously, rather than the earlier process of sequential auctions for that impressions. 
So it, it's going from an auction ahead of time to real time through this code. And I could see how that, bidding. and I could see how that would make things more complicated. Oh, yeah. This innovation has fundamentally transformed ProMatic advertising by providing buyers with increased transparency and equal access to ad impressions, which result in greater demand for each ad impression and increased publisher revenue. According to Keeville, header bidding has now been adopted by 67% of digital publishers in the United States. So it's become more complex because of header bidding and header bidding is the it's industry, worth, industry it's standard. It's worth the now. extra cost because you get better results. And it's becoming the industry standard. Yep. Yeah. And this is a year old too. Mm -hmm. uh, massive data volumes and increased costs. So yeah, the, the amount of information that's flown at you is, is huge. Ad spending consolidated as advertising increased the percentage of their overall budgets to a digital front. They are increasingly demanding improved transparency and control of their entire digital advertising supply chain. Transparency includes understanding the fees are being paid, to whom the fees are being paid, and what value is being delivered. Yep. The desire for transparency and control has led to a growing trend for advertisers to spend direct relationship with vendors in the digital advertising ecosystem. Okay. Uh, protected consumer. Yep. GDPR. It's hard to get consumer data protected. Our market opportunity. Uh, global advertising is huge. Our solutions enable advertising on the open internet. All right, here's Facebook. Okay. While walled gardens have grown their market share in recent years, advertisers have become increasingly dissatisfied with their limited ability to access and use their data outside the walled gardens. Yep. The lack of control over the use generated content shown next to their ads and the poor stewardship of their data. As a this result, is where being Switzerland makes a big deal. Uh, more than a thousand advertisers on Facebook, including five of the top 20, announced their intention to pause buys in 2020. In contrast, open internet advertising can provide advertisers control over where their ads appear, enabling them to high quality. Yeah, so it's more control. Yes. So to be, so I, I just wanna, I wanna play this out here for a second of what this means for me. Against huge players like Google and Facebook or Meta, then they have a counter positioning mode. Against smaller players, or equal size players like Magnite, they do have a low cost moat because they own all their hardware. They're vertically integrated. So I'm just pointing that out because it, you don't always see a company that is trying to build a moat against the Goliaths right here, but also building one against the smaller or equal sized upstarts right here. And it seems like that's what they're able to do. Thank you to Brandon. Uh... Brandon, who says he's worked on a header bitcher product, it's definitely a big deal. Thank you. Our viewers are awesome. Uh, okay, our role. So we saw that. They sit in the middle. They added a whole bunch of publishers uh, consisting of 60,000 domains, 20,000 apps, including Verizon and News Corp. We have a high retention. Traditionally referred to as sell side platforms, platforms such as ours are designed to monetize inventory for publishers and app developers. Demand side platforms, which act as advertising agencies designed to execute their marketing. Yep. So the trade desk is on the demand side. So demand, mm -hmm. so the demand side helps you buy ads. The sell mm -hmm. side helps you sell ads mm -hmm. and those two things work together. So the leader on the demand side is the trade desk. The leader on the sell side is either Pubmatic or Magnite. I mean, that's what it seems like I, or, or, or within the walled gardens of Google and, and Facebook. Well, yes. Outside of Google and Facebook. Yeah. Okay. Advertisers and ad agencies. Uh, spending begins with advertisers to control. Uh, okay. We have entered into agreements with all of the major agency holding companies and some of the largest advertisers in the world. And we believe this will continue to drive more ad spend. Okay. We have specialized platform. It's been built over 14 years. We have a real time transaction process. Uh, ad inventories were up 69%. We have reduce their cost. Okay. Independent. We are aligned with our customers by being an independent infrastructure platform. Same as a trade desk. Transparency. What's this? Our buyers have experienced very low fraud levels with credits of 0.2% of overall ad spending. This compares very favorably to a trustworthy accountability group industry average of fraud of 11%. Wow. That's, that's pretty high. Okay. We enable the open internet. We're scalable. Our strengths, investment innovation, 
Uh, we have generated positive net cash, an average gross margin of 70% for the last nine years. Some companies just like profits. Like that's I mean, how they're look built. Look at that. Seven yeah. years. Flexible platform, rapid innovation. Significantly. We have released software updates 326 times. Highly efficient infrastructure. Uh, uh, so that's how they're gaining the, the cost per revenue is decreasing one through scale two because they own their own infrastructure. Machine learning. Okay. A whole bunch of data of customer trust, Omni reach, growth strategy, uh, more of the same. Uh, track new buyers, uh, efficiency, improve liquidity, develop new products. Uh, we have successfully introduced multiple new products of the market over the past 12 months, including identity solution, header bidder, and our audience rep. We are constantly focused on creating new products we believe solve our customers' needs. Expanded to new forms. Okay. New geographies. Oh, this is good. We decided to enter new advertising markets. We, in 2018, we entered Indonesia in 2019, South Korea. We're constantly adding more. We work with the big guys. Uh, so the video play. Yep. Uh, we do all these things. Well, okay, here we go. Uh, Verizon media group accounted for 20% of our revenue. So there is one customer concentration. We should check on that in the most recent quarterly report to see where yes. that's at. Do you want to get that? And you're going to find that by going to the 10Q. So you 10Q. want to check that? I'll go get it right now. While yep. we're waiting on that. So that number is down, even though the revenue is up. So that's a good trend, but that is something to keep in mind. And this, this same trend used to persist at the trade desk as well. So mm -hmm. customer concentration is not new. Their customer concentration was through the major um, advertising companies, but just point that out there. We have broad exposure. We reach 73,000 advertisers per month. Uh, we do all these things. Well, two of our largest DSP relationships are Google and the trade desks. We have a partnered party to agree with Google under which Google is a buyer on our platform. Okay. Automatic give your news. Either so party may terminate. I got it real quick for you. So right now it looks like Verizon is down to 17%. Okay, so it's trending in the right direction, but there Trend. is some customer concentration to at least be aware of. And the other part just to throw in there is that it says three buyers accounted for a certain, and that's going up. So the, I'm guessing those three buyers are the Trade Desk, Google, and Facebook. I'm not okay. sure, but I'm guessing. And they were just 10% two years ago. They jumped to 20% and now they're 28%. That doesn't concern me at all, but I'm just throwing it out there. Okay. Uh, so reading some more here, this is reporting our team and culture. It says a whole bunch of best places to work. So we can check that. Um, uh, cool. 204 employees. I mean, that's a tiny our company competitions, uh, SSPs like Magnite, smaller SSPs, sell side providers as, as well as the largest divisions of, of Google. Okay. There's direct competition pre-bid uh, marketplace. As a result, we are able to gain access to competitors' ad impressions. The, uh, let me read this. While there is direct competition as noted above, our cloud infrastructure is interoperable with the major header bidder software frameworks, including pre-bid, Google's open bidding, Amazon Transparent, and others. As a result, we are able to gain access to competitors' ad impressions. Okay. So while they operate their own infrastructure, they can still see and gain data from the, uh, from the big boys. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sales and marketing, intellectual property. Okay. Uh, risks. Um, everything we just said so is much. wrong. Uh, co-founders. Yep. So I want to go down to their manage mints discussion. There you go. Okay. Um, it's high sell side platforms. So we own and operate the infrastructure. We generate revenue from publishers primarily through revenue share agreements. Generally, one contract that removes automatically for successive one year periods. Okay. Um, we primarily work with publishers and app developers who access to direct access their ad inventory. Our partners aggregate further. Did you we see that like Zynga was one yes. of theirs? I and thought that EA, was really interesting. And EA. So Zynga yeah. is um, a leading. They just got bought, didn't they? Uh, no, Activision just got bought. And Zynga too. Zynga did too? I was I unaware, I but I know Activision by, did. I think by 
the other take two. Okay. Um, our channel partners aggregate and provide further access to thousands of apps. We help monetize valuable impressions for our clients. 12,000 publishers, 80,000 individual domains. We have written service agreements with DSP platforms. Since our founding, we have developed a large portfolio of buyers on behalf of Google, the trade desk, the, all these big publishers. Our ability to efficiently add and monetize value impressions by focus on this, okay. Our, our gross margin was very high. We derive 68% uh, of revenue from the Americas, 23% from Europe and Middle East, and 10% from Asia Pacific. So they're already one third international. Mm -hmm. um, mobile video and video combined with 65% of our revenue. This is similar to the trade desk where like connected TV was. So the, the other share. 35 is desktop pretty much. Likely. Yeah. And gaming. Yeah. And gaming. That's a good point. I didn't think of that. Okay. So revenue up, up, accelerated Wonder. operating income up, up huge gains, profits, huge gains. Yeah. They're just a deep at that margin is very strong cash provided by operations of as high. Okay. Growing access to value impressions, monetization of them, identifying valuable increased revenue There's from the publishers. Tension rates. Yeah expand internationally seasonality at uh, seasonality we generate revenue from publishers to use our platform our publishers allow publishers to sell in real time ad we generate revenue primarily through fees charged to our publishers which are percentage of the value of the advertising impression that publishers monetize we report revenue on a net basis okay cost of revenue technology um Okay, so let's look at this real quick. Yep. So technology, so sales and marketing is the big expense, roughly half, uh, just under half. A little bit, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, they're in growth mode. That makes sense. But look uh, at like G and A and technology and development. They mm -hmm. didn't move at all. Although part of that might be because they've paused them too. And came and came public. Uh, assuming these are gap numbers. Mm -hmm. um, but either way. Acceptable spending. In fact, you might even say we'll spend more. Stock-based comp only three point six million dollars for the year. Gross margin stable. Uh, SGNA is coming down, coming down, and coming down. So yeah, that's the big operating leverage right there. I mean, you want to see what operating leverage is? That's it right there. Yep. Um, revenue. It's stable. Gross margin. Uh, okay. All right. Let's go to the most recent quarterly report. Yeah. Uh, here, presentation. Okay. So revenue is up 50%. Net income was up 117%. Most of this uh, is going to be what we just went through too. Yes. I, 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 maybe we can go to the end and see the, uh, the actual numbers. Expanded from desktop mobile to CTV. So I'd like to see. So what else is new with them? Financial results up big. Um, that's all growing. 157%. Net income adjusted EBITDA. I hope they provide the, okay, they don't. Um, there's a tear sheet. Great. Can, um, okay. Can you give us just the numbers? Oh, that's prepared remarks. Uh, let's go. Oh, well, proxy statements. Good one. And then let's go to just give me like the press release for the third quarter. There, there you is. go. Okay. Um, net margin over 10%. I like to call that out. Raising outlook. Uh, revenue is 58 million. Net dollar retention was high. Cash and cash equivalents, 136 million with no debt, an increase of 12%. So great balance sheet. Um, did this growing, growing, diversified across 20 verticals. The top 10 grew 70%. Excluding political ad spending across every vertical was at least double digits up. Record number of supply paths, adoption of new products. Over two thirds of three quarter revenue had alternative identifiers to the third party cookie and Apple's IDFE in place. So they're they're already pretty well hedged against that. Mm -hmm. Great outlook for the fourth quarter for the full year: two hundred million in revenue. Uh, and this is a billion dollar company. Yep. I I'm telling you, Brian. Uh, okay. Balance sheet. Uh, well, we already know, but, uh, okay. Accounts receivable is the, oof. 
Uh, that's going to be the nature of the business. Yep. Uh, okay. Uh, Goodwill. So they made an acquisition, but it's very small. Accounts payable is also high. Um, great balance sheet. Yep. Great balance sheet. Great income statement. Uh, stock based compensation for the nine months was ten million dollars. Wow. I have a feeling this is going to score very well on my checklist. Uh, I've I've just got a little smile on my face. Okay. Glass I'm just thinking. Door. Pubmatic. Uh, great, great numbers. And that's that's off of a decent number of reviews, like three hundred ninety-one. Six. Yeah. Uh, is growing higher. They work on higher. Okay. They follow higher and fire policy, so they'll fire you if no transparency. So people don't like the hiring and firing uh, policy. Um. Uh, but this is clearly not that okay. big of a problem. I think I'm good. Um, ownership. Oh, thank statement. you. Thank you. Um, uh, so this is the... Okay. Okay. So uh, Rajiv, is he the CEO? I think um, so. Rajiv 10%, is the CEO. His brother, 10%. And then there was another uh, founder. Kumar, is he in there? He's not Kumar. in there. How can he not be in there? He might just not be in the C-suite. Oh, oh, oh. Um, I take that back. That's class B. Um, so if, he, if, he was, if he was on the board in any way, he would have to be listed. No, but the third, the third one wasn't on the board. I just don't think he was in the C-suite. Oh, okay. Well, either way, 37, 37 million seven shares. And a half out of how many? Was it 50? Was that a 50? Like 56 million? Where was the earnings release? I think it was. Was it 50 million? Uh, shares outstanding. 56. 56 million. So they own 37. They own more than half of this company. Yeah. Okay. Well, Revenue recurring. Yes. Profitable. Yes. Free cash flow positive. Yes. Beat the market. No. And it's down 72% from its recent high. Okay. Today's date 1 27 2022. Oh, did you check uh, against expectations? Oh, thank you. You pub medic. Um, beat, beat, meet, beat. Three out of four. Three. Hey, out of four. I thought it wasn't even possible, but okay. I guess if you meet, it is possible. Balance sheet, great. Five out of five. Gross margin. Um, I'm gonna give you. It was you seventy-two, a, and it was slightly rising. I would it give was. him a two and a half if I could, uh, but I'll. Uh, it's rising, so I'll give him a three. Um, but I would give him a two and a half. If I had that differentiated returns on capital, they were good. Yeah, weren't they double yeah, digit, um, medium teens to twenties. Free cash flow. Uh, oh, positive. was it free cash flow positive? Yep. Did we look twenty six million dollars? Uh, let me just check that really quick. Free cash flow, uh, negative, and then it rose. So yes, it is. It is positive, and earnings per share is positive and growing fast. Okay, their moat network effect. Uh, I'm not going to give them any credit for the AI thing. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll give them credit, very strong credit for the switching costs. Mm -hmm. um, 10, uh, 10, do they have a durable cost advantage over their smaller rivals? Yes. I, I'll give them a couple of points for counter positioning. Uh, I'll give them, f yes, they're counter positioning against Google and Facebook. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm, I'm giving them f full credit there. Uh, moat direction is definitely heading in the right uh, direction. That's too high of a score. I'll give them an eight here then. Um, uh, 18 out of 20, I think is pretty good. Mm -hmm. I think that's appropriate. Okay. Uh, potential optionality. Everything was to support the mission. So they're staying within there. So I'll give them a four mm -hmm. on that. Uh, organic revenue growth, four out of four. Top dog and first mover. I'm going to assume so. Uh, I'll give them a it's two hard to know because they're right there with um, Magnite, Magnite. Mm -hmm. operating leverage. So they don't have a lot of operating leverage ahead of them. They have because some they're already but not a ton. so profitable. So I'll give them a, a two there. Uh, customer acquisition costs were okay, uh, about less than half of gross profit. So I'll give you a two there. Uh, dependence. Uh, what happened to this company's revenue? Uh, it grew, grew, grew. I believe, right? Oh yeah. Grew. It just, it slowed. It slowed. Oh, that was 2019. Um, but either way, once you're on board, 
Um, I'll go four out of five, four out of five. Uh, recurring revenue, all of it's recurring. Is there pricing power? I think there's room for them to increase prices. Soul in the game, four out of four. Inside ownership, three out of three. Glassdoor rating, four out of four. Mission statement, three out of three. The stock has been obliterated, so it's yeah. underperformed, uh, but they are three out of four on beating expectations. 79. Look at that score. Bad stuff. Accounting irregularities, no. Customer concentration, yes. yes. Minus three. Um, industry disruption, no outside forces that's accounted for up top. When I talked about the economy, big market loser so far, but it's still so early on that. Um, actually they just, they'd round trips to where they priced, right? Uh, yeah, I think yes. they said 21% down. So for those watching, I use, I, when I think about this, I, what I'm trying to avoid is companies that have been public for like five years or longer and just have a history of losing this company one year and, so and explain still, why you do that too because i mean i bet some people are like well wouldn't you want that company uh, losers tend to keep on losing winners tend to keep on winning so there if i go. see a company that has been public for 10 years and it's dramatically underperformed the market i think it's going to keep underperforming conversely if i see a company that's public for 10 years and it's dramatically outperformed i think it's going to out continue to outperform um but given what's happened to the growth stocks recently Nothing surprised me, but we've seen the share price. Binary event, nope. Extreme dilution, nope. Growth by acquisition, nope. Complicated financials, nope. Antitrust concerns, nope. Headquarter risk. Where is, it, where is this company headquartered? Uh, I don't remember now. I mean, given their stock based compensation. Oh, California. Uh, okay. So, nope. Currency risk, not yet. 76. I'm giving it the thumbs up. Your turn. All right. You, I, your jaw is going to drop a little bit when I do this. All right. So mission statement, full credit. And here's the part where I think your jaw might drop. So for the moat, I'm going to give them one point for that AI network effect, mostly because they've been doing this since 2006. I think that they've got something. Switching costs, I'll give them full credit. So that's two more points. I'm going to give them credit for owning their own stuff because I, I'm going to dig into that because I think it's an advantage against Magnite. So I'm going to give them one point for that to bring it to four. And I'm also going to give them one point for the counter positioning against Google and Facebook, Meta, whatever you want to call it. That's really high. That's so, a five. That's, that's a, a five. super strong mode score for you. So if you are at home and you know this industry better than I do, and you think that that's ridiculous, then by all means, take some off. For this, if you can make it possible, I'm going to give them two and a half. And I'm going to tell you why. It's because they have demonstrated with the release of products over the past year that they can offer up these new products and people are using them. Uh, I don't think it's going to go higher than that, though, to be clear. And to be honest with you, I don't want it to go higher. I don't want them to leave this niche that they're focusing on. Definitely a plus one here. Are you surprised by that? Or, no. Or is that? Okay. All right. I, it, it, this, that score makes sense. They're free cash flow positive. <laughs> it's growing and they have a perfect balance sheet. Uh, I am going to take two points off for concentration. Um, I, I want to say though, that I saw up here that Brandon asked the question, is this the rare industry where customer concentration doesn't really matter because they simply have to be business to business? I, I think that that's a pretty poignant um, way of looking at it. So again, the beauty of this is I might look you, at that. You're aware say, of it. Yeah, you're aware of it. Exactly. Uh, Glassdoor plus one, founder plus one, ownership plus one. So Brian, let's just take a step back for one second and say that if you take that concentration risk out for the same reasons that Brandon just talked about, you're looking at a 13 and a half. Now, I might have been generous on the moat. I think you have been. I, I, and if that's the case, that's fine. It's but still... It's well into your investable. But here's category. the other thing, Brian. There's only one other company I know of under $15 billion that's gotten that high of a score. I know what that one is. It's the one you won't start shutting up about. No, I, and it's okay <laughs> because I already own enough, so I don't need to worry about trading rules. Axon Enterprise is the only other one. Okay. And so I own this stock, and I'll be very frank. I'm going to own more of it in the future. Okay. Um, I understand why so we're going to go to stock card and we're going to put this in brian's thumbs up anti-fragile uh portfolio so we're going to buy it today's date is the 27th it's a 21 dollars stock so we'll call that 49 uh, shares yep 49 and the score was 11.5 your, your math is very good do you do this beforehand or did you just come up with 49 right like that 
Well, it was 50 minus a little I know, bit. I know. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm impressed. You're doing a good job. Okay, the anti. And then mine is going to do the same thing. EBM, uh, problematic, pick a decision. It's going to be a buy. And today it's the 27th, 49. And for me, it was a 76, which is also a very good company for a um, – a relatively new to public company. And as a reminder, three points could go to the company if concentration continues to tick down over time. What else did I take points away for? Uh, well, concentration. Um, not much. No, not much. Yeah. Uh, while, while we, like you, are disgusted with these, our yeah. scores so far, one thing we did, we noticed before we started filming today, so the quality portfolio is down 31%. If you go to my anti-portfolio, uh, which is the thumbs down one, uh, that's down 40%. Uh, so from that perspective- I think perspective, the same is true with mine as well. Yeah, but... So Brian's anti-fragile anti portfolio is down 34%. His fragile portfolio is down 48%. <laughs> so the early signs are, while the overall returns are terrible, the early signs are the system is doing its job, right? Well, and, and here's the thing. The, we've been telling people that we will check back in 2024. And the time between mid-November and now, like for some, for people that invest in stocks like we do, one of the most painful two and a half months, this is way more painful just in terms of numbers, if that's all we're worried about, than the pandemic onset was way more painful for much longer. Um, that's why we go based on three years. And I also saw in here, which by the way, is one of the nicest comments we could have gotten from Stephen Bond. Only a few months of investing hours a day doing Khan Academy courses. Uh, you guys are the best. I love that you skipped the price discussion. You know, price matters to some people. It just doesn't matter to us. And I want to be very clear. I might come on here sometime in the future and be like, I was wrong about valuation. I'm not, that's not where I'm at now, but I reserve the right to change my well, mind let's, about it. Well, well, while we're here, let's talk about valuation. So uh, according to Yahoo, the company is trading at uh, nine. No, that's not right. See, that can't be right. That's not right. Cause sales this year, were going to be 226 million. Yeah. Uh, so 227. That's, so, so it's four, like five or five. Four, yeah, four and a half times sales. Um, I think the net income number is usable here. So this is a case where the PE ratio is instructive. Mm -hmm. um, and a according to them, 78 cents for the year. Does that jive? Yeah. So the Q Q4 must be their big quarter. 78 cents um, in earnings. So, so like 90 to 100? No. Uh, yeah. What's that? 20? 20, 20? No. 30? Is it 30? Oh, 30. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know yeah. where I was going with so that. So yes. 30-ish times earnings. I don't know why analysts are projecting an earnings decline next year. That might be because of one-timey things on the bottom line. Uh, growth mm -hmm. is expected to slow. Uh, so there's that notable thing there uh, too. But valuation-wise, this company is not insanely priced. Right. At all. Right. Uh, at all. So there you have it. We talked valuation. <laughs> that might be the most you ever get from us on that. No, I don't mind doing that more often. Uh, and to reminder, I, oh, I personally, I always look at valuation. It, it, it's a part of my process. It's not at all a part of nope. Brian's. However, what I've learned the hard way is don't lead with valuation. Yes. Make it a part of your process, not the only it's thing your, that matters. It's your last filter. It's my last of filter. filter. It's not my first filter. Right. Correct. So that you don't miss out on high quality companies. Correct. Um, they are currently many cookie alternatives from Unified 2.0 to Trade Desk. Post cookie will not be a long term product for programmatic advertising. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm on. I'm, I believe you, Dave. I'm, I'm on that same kind of mindset. Uh, the CEO of the Trade Desk, which I do own, uh, by the way, uh, has been banging that drum for a long time. And you know, I even remember when we talked to the CEO of Sam Rush, or maybe not the CEO, but once someone in the C-suite, he talked about how the disappearance of cookies, their business is different than what than what Pubmatic does, but he was talking about how that is actually going to be a tailwind for them. Right. Yes. Um so there you go. Uh Jam, it, it, it's in theory not going to be a it, it's not going to be a headwind, it's going to be a tailwind. Um, yeah. One other thing worth knowing is we, we started scoring ourselves on stock card in 
July of last year, August. I backdated the ones that we did on my framework. So there's some from a little bit earlier. Yeah. So we, we, we started at the, at the, the recent top. Yeah. <laughs> but it's okay. That's it's okay. Like, you got to accept that that's how this works. I, I read this the other day, 25 million new investors, 25 million investors have joined the markets in 2021. 25 million. Okay. But here's the, here, here's, here's the bigger question. How many have left in the last three months? Well, so that's the sad part, right? A whole right. bunch of people join and they say the market doesn't work. It just goes down and then they leave. Ugh. Um, smaller SSPs will lose out to bigger ones eventually in the consolidation wave, albeit like how TTD ended up winning over the DSP war. I could see that. Mm -hmm. uh, Magnite is their only competitor spelled out in the 10K. Thank you. Uh, and I read, I, there's a lot of comments in here. I don't about, know those other ones. There's a lot of th. comments about Magnite um, not having the same leverage as uh, Pubmatic does and not owning their hardware. I think that's a big one. Well, so there you go. Ma Magnite's gross margin is 59% versus this company's 60, 70, 72. 72. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's, a, that's again, it's a, it's a business strategy. It reminds yeah. me of um, uh, Snapchat versus Facebook. Not yeah. the same planet in terms of scale uh, uh but snapchat buys it, it, it's um it's reliant on amazon so is netflix by the way yep one last thing really want to give a shout out to our channel members those people that are pitching in some cash that want you to know that that cash does two things for us it helps us make this free for anyone to watch so you're literally helping build the investing community and two, it helps us be able to put the time into doing stuff like this. And when we make our shorter videos, we have to hire some help to edit those. And it helps pay for that. So thank you. So overall, yeah, I'm impressed. I am too. Uh, I, I am impressed with Pugmatic. I understand why you, why you did it at a billion dollar. So one question I like to ask myself is, could I see this company 10xing? Right? Easily. So if this, company, if this company 10x, it would be worth $11 billion. Um, it, it, for does that jive? Well, for comparison, the trade desk is twenty nine billion dollars. So if this company ten x, it would be one third the size of the trade desk today. Now the trade desk is very richly valued, even after whatever recent dive they've gone on. So they're down fifty percent. They're still richly valued. But it, it could this company ten x? Uh, if the thesis plays out, I think the answer is yes. Yep, I'm with you, hundred percent. There you go. All right, so we hope you enjoyed that. Um, we might be doing some more live stream. Oh, next week, we're yes. going to be doing a live stream that we're going to be doing an earnings review of Meta, so Facebook. Uh, so next week, we're not doing a stock from scratch. You're going to see us doing an earnings review from scratch. We haven't and, done that before. Yeah, yeah, we're doing it live. And the reason we chose Meta is because they will be coming out the night before we go live. So we, we won't have taken a look at it. We, we're going to take a solemn oath to not look at their reviews so you can see how we look at it because we yes. think that's a valuable skill we'll show you the process that we go through to review earnings we think that'll be uh fun and uh educational and that's a big name that everyone knows that reports the day before thank you so much thank you to our channel members who picked this one it was a fun one and i that am was. glad that i have that on the thumbs up side of my uh scorecard uh until next week brian's out <laughs>